Hey guys. <laughs> I think I'm always laughing when I start off my vlogs, aren't I? Um, anyway, it's really, I just had to go turn the heat up. It's really cold in my house. Um, at first I was almost like, maybe I should go change my shirt and put a different hat on since I shot the last video with all of this on. And then I'm like, that's just moronic. So um, yes, it is Sunday and cheers to you. Um, I am going to, uh, not going to hit the gym today, but I'm probably going to go in and do um, something because I have my workout clothes on. I feel like doing something. But anyway, um, I wanted to shoot two more videos on two things that are just hot on my mind. Um, I did just listen to one of my uh, CDs here, like I said in my last tape. I wasn't going to get distracted, and that's all I did. Um, but the first thing, and actually, I, I listened to the CD, and then I was checking out my Instagram, and, and one of the comments that I got um, on one of my posts, it, it actually made me think, okay, these are going to be my next two um, vlogs, and I'll probably come back to these points, but one of them is, and I talked about this on my blog, I'll be talking about a lot of this stuff. You have to really change the way you see yourself. Now, underneath this topic, right? Look at this. Really pops. Get over it, Kelly. Underneath this topic of changing the way you see yourself um, is, you know, part of that is what I talked about in my last video, too. You, you have to stop. We all do it. I have been more guilty of it than anyone. You have to stop and realize what a difference it'll make. The negative self-talk, um, you know, please understand, too, if you're watching my video or maybe you've stumbled across some of my stuff elsewhere, don't make the mistake I did. I used to hear certain people talk about things like this and go, oh, positive self-talk, right, you know, what's that going to get me? I'm going to sit around the mirror going, I love you, you're awesome, go Kelly, you know, and I thought it sounded, you know, fluffy and stupid and ridiculous. One of the things, frankly, that impressed me the most about Tony Robbins being at his seminars, you know, he got up on stage and he's like, how many of you people here are, have, been, have been dragged here by somebody that knows you? Um, how many people here think this is a bunch of hoo-ha, it's, it's a joke? He's like, look, you know, and, and they say this in most of the stuff. Try it out. I'll give you your money back if you think it's a bunch, if, if you think it's a bunch of horse crap in other ways. Um, but I was. I was one of those people that was like, oh, I'm never going to go to one of those things. That's stupid. Um, all those people are ripping people off. And, you know, if somebody said anything about positive self-talk or a self-help book, I'd be like, please kill me if I ever do that. Um, and here I am telling you about it because here's the thing. I was wrong. I was skeptical. Why was I skeptical? Because I had doubt and because I didn't want to dive into something. And, and this is part of what my next video is going to be about. Worrying about what other people think of you. Worrying about what will people think of me if I say I'm going to buy this kind of a book. Or if I say, you know, what will, what will people think of me if I say, oh, I went to a Tony Robbins seminar and I walked on fire and they're going to laugh and they're going to, well, you know what? That's on them. Because it's not my job to go out and get somebody to read this self-help book or this personal improvement or this business book or whatever. It's not about one book or one author or one program or whatever. It's, it's your, your, your approach to being taught and to learning something about yourself. It can come from any number of ways. It could come from a seminar. It could come from a, a, a coach. It could come from a trainer. It could come from um, a business coach. It could come from a, a seminar, from an author, from any number of things. But if your reason for not doing something is because you are skeptical and you are you, you, you're skeptical and you don't really even know because you haven't investigated it. Something's telling you, like, you know, why is it turning your head? Why are you looking at it? That's because somewhere deep down you're interested in it. And if you choose to not pursue something because of what other people will think of you, then you're going to spend the rest of your life limited because worrying about what other people think is a joke. Worrying about what other people think is a waste of your energy. Trust me, it's one of the biggest changes too that I've made, but that's going to be the next vlog. This vlog is you've got to change the way you see yourself. And trust me, this is what somebody said on this um, on this Instagram post. I'm not going to call her out because she's one of, you know, a hundred people that say the same thing. I've said similar things. The way this shirt is laying on my... 
It's a cute shirt, but it tends to, it's like another shirt that I had. It rides way up, and I, I'm just somebody that's, you know, this is the shoulder seam. The shoulder seam is supposed to be here. It just, sorry. <laughs> you all probably can't see any of this. It is a cute shirt, isn't it? Um, even though underneath it, I'm wearing a, a workout top and a workout bra, so I have uniboob, typical. Um, not one of my Under Armour bras. Um, so, changing the way you see yourself. What did this girl write? Um, we were talking about, um, I do this thing on Instagram now where I pick somebody who's followed me or left a comment and I take a screenshot of their um, account and I tell everybody that happens to tune into my post that day, like, hey, check this person out. And it's, a, it's a new way to, to get other people following other people and so on and so forth and I just thought it was cool. But anyway, I also ask people, I'm like, why don't you put in the comments somebody that you like that you think we should all follow? And one of these people put up, oh, you know, follow this person. I wish I had her discipline or I wish I had her um, stick with it attitude. And I wrote back, of course, and I said, stop selling yourself short. But here's the thing, especially in fitness, I probably shouldn't say that. I probably shouldn't say especially in fitness. It, it really can be in so many things. And I have been guilty of this in myriad ways. You have to change the way you see yourself to really believe that you can do the things that you're setting yourself out to do. Okay, I know for, without, without question, that what I've been you, spooning myself every single day for so long is doubt, not believing I could do anything, thinking that um, all of that stuff is for really other people. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes we think these things unconsciously, okay? It's not like a lot of us get up and go, well, I really like to lose weight, but that is just for other people that are more disciplined than myself. You might not actually think that, but I've heard a lot of people say that. Oh, I can't stick with anything. Um, remember I said that about myself with running, because why? Why had I said, I said, I'm not a runner. I can't run, obviously, there's something wrong with me. How many of you have said that in so many ways? How many of you have tried to lose weight? Or maybe it's tried to build muscle? Or um, maybe it's trying to get, you know, six pack abs or lose your, lose your uh, baby weight, whatever. It's usually something, you know, fitness related. Have you said the things that I've said in the past when, when this whole perimenopause, hormonal imbalance thing hit me like a ton of bricks? Well, I must be the only one. I must be the only one because I've tried everything, you know? and you, you put that little blanket around yourself and you cuddle up with it because that's what keeps you warm and it keeps you from trying, quite frankly. Um, I have said that more times than I wish to say. <laughs> I really should just take this shirt off. Um, anyway, when you see yourself as you know financial success or fitness success or job success or relationship success must be for everybody else. Or you know it must be that I, it, it's not meant to be for me because it's not happening. Well, I don't care if you think it's the biggest bunch of baloney. You don't have to watch The Secret, you don't have to call it um, attraction, um, law of attraction. You don't have to put a label on it or whatever, but there is something to be said. Look at people that are successful in, in whatever, in whatever it is that they do. If someone's successful in their diet and exercise and they're competing um, and they're disciplined, you know, they have a certain attitude about themselves. You don't really see that many people that have succeeded in business or relationships or whatever that don't have a, a completely affirmative belief in themselves and a, and, a, and a sense of clarity and a sense of absolute certainty. And most of them will also tell you, you know, there was a point in their life they, they weren't that way. They decided to turn things around and that they work on it. That this is something that they work on not only training or learning for their job or improving themselves or you know learning new ways to, to invest and, and diversify and create residual income, whatever it is, they're always learning, they're always adapting, they're always growing. And they weren't just born that way. You don't hear many people, aside from folks that might have inherited a ton of wealth, you don't hear a lot of people that are like, yeah, I don't know, I just got up one day and decided to um, create a billion dollar industry. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> No idea, I just did it. No. <laughs> People that have that kind of drive and determination decided to do it, and they see themselves as, uh, uh, they see themselves as being able to do it. 
Um, I've read a lot of, hold on, uh, business biographies. I tend to read, can, tend to be, because I'm so ridiculously excited about Fitfluential now too, you know, you want to learn more, you want to apply more. So I've been reading a lot of business biographies. And, and what's a common thread in all of these, I read one recently about uh, Amazon, I've read in the past um, some great ones by Starbucks, um, Southwest Airlines, Walmart, um, trying to think of some of the other good ones that are out there. There's several. But what's interesting is you hear about the backgrounds of so many of these businesses. And I mean, these are businesses that changed everything. You know, think about the world before Starbucks. I don't care if you like it or you don't like it. We didn't have coffee shops. We, I mean, it, it fundamentally changed the way people got together. Um, it became a destination. And he said, people looked at him and said, there is no way people are going to spend $4 for a cup of coffee. And now people don't even think twice about it because he never doubted that he could make it happen. If you look at the history of Jeff Bezos, you know, they had a lot of, this is the founder of Amazon, they had a lot of times where that business was like tanking and, and investors and the, and the stock price had gone down. He never, ever faltered in his belief. And he had to go against the grain a lot. He had to go against and walk into a room when everybody's like, this is a joke. If you really, things are not always going to be that you start becoming successful and then it's a smooth ride. More often than not, the, the greatest people that have achieved the greatest things have had ups and downs. I mean, how many videos do you have to watch of Michael Jordan or this person or that person who says, you know, I wasn't always getting the winning shot. I didn't always uh, play to, and, and play the best game. Um, Tiger Woods, I mean, some of, the, some of the people that are known as the greatest athletes or the greatest business people, Donald Trump, I mean, they, several of these people, I don't want to misspeak because I don't know the full history, but, you know, they almost tanked or went bankrupt or maybe some of them did go bankrupt and then they came back. Um, they, they just have that, in, you know, they say indomitable will, right? They have that belief in themselves, okay? You have to start seeing yourself differently. One of the things that I do now because I got to the end of this year and realized, you know, I, I was getting down on myself again. I got very upset about the Achilles situation. And, you know, then to have taken a few steps back, you know, I'd, I'd lost X amount of weight and then I had the Achilles thing, had to stop, and then I got frustrated and, you know, certainly wasn't sticking to my diet. And then suddenly, oh, my workout pants are a little tighter. And I'm like, what the hell? Then I felt, you know, I don't think I was necessarily saying the words internally to myself. I guess I can't do it. I'm never going to amount to anything. But I certainly know that in my business, my, this fitness business that I have, I see a lot of people that are all levels of ridiculous buff. And I have come to realize that I would always set my goals to be here. Like I talked about this about my, my mom in one of my last videos where she, she has said in the past several years, Kelly, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm this, this age, I don't need to try to look like this, I just want to lose this amount of weight. Well, guess what? I've been guilty of a similar attitude about myself in saying, well, I know I, I, know I can't get that ripped, right? I couldn't, I couldn't shoot for, you know, being in competition shape because, well, you know, I mean, I'm 44, I'm going to be 45 next year. And, um, I mean, that's just, that's unachievable for me. I, I really should just be realistic and say, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be here. You know what you're doing when you do that? A, you're limiting yourself. B, you're, you're continuing to put yourself in a little box. So it's going to affect what you shoot for. So it's going to affect your goals. But then three, you know, it, it just changes your attitude. It, I mean, think about, Think about you know the motivational videos you see about football teams and and they go into the locker room. What does the coach do? Does the coach go, hey, you guys are doing a pretty good job. I hope you go out there and do a, a good job. I want you to just go out there and have fun. They're like, no, ah, I want you to go out there and kick ass. That's there's a, there's a huge difference, and that's the difference in underestimating yourself and seeing yourself differently is that you get up differently and you put your workout clothes differently and you attack the gym differently when you see yourself as, you know what? I am going to be that before and after. I saw that before and after, and I'm talking about someone specifically. Um, I saw this girl on Instagram and she did a, a six month snapshot of, of her progress. 
and I looked at her her before picture and it reminded me of really my before um, probably about a year ago and you know I mean who knows at what phase I am right now but I'm looking at her going okay six months and an A you know she just kept at it and she didn't start really seeing the changes in her body until probably two months in or whatever um, but it was remarkable and I think many people would look at her after picture and go oh my god that would take me too long. There's no way. I could never. How many times have you said that? I could never eat that kind of a diet that those people do. I could never. Oh, those people never drink. They never go out with their friends. I could never do that. Who told you you could never do that? Because I'll tell you what, you'll be pretty damn surprised what you can do. I mean, I've gotten to the point this year when I started my diet and I started my training in, in January. Excuse me, I'm talking about 2013. I dove in for the first time. I was ridiculously consistent for the first time. I put my accountability out there for the first time. I believed that I could do it, even though in the very beginning I was doubting it, I was paranoid, I was worried what you guys were all gonna think. I was worried that I would prove my biggest doubts true. I was worried that I was gonna put all this time and effort and I, I wouldn't make any, I wouldn't have my after picture. And then, uh, you know, I'd get on the scale and it would be like half a pound down, a third of a pound. I mean, the scale for me is just the, my worst enemy, okay? I stuck with it and now I look at things and I have come so far in 2013. I've learned so much um, about that and, and then again, towards the end of this year, all this stuff I'm imparting on a, onto you, but I changed the way I see myself and more importantly, even most recently, I've changed the way I see myself as running this business. I've changed the way I see myself and what I'm capable of. I've changed the way I see myself in being just unapologetic and being excited about what I want to share. And you know what? If you're watching this video and you think I'm crazy and you think that this is ridiculous, go nutty. It's not going to, it's not going to change me because everything I'm doing is changing my life and the life of those around, excuse me, the lives of those around me for the better. So I don't worry about what other people think of me. That's my next video. I've changed the way I see myself. I don't start, a, a, you know, when I'm getting ready to start my new diet and, and, and go into my training program, and it's all going to be at, at the gym and, and, and it's a, a really very specific approach with my, this diet plan. And, you know, I've got everything lined up because now I know how to deal with my Achilles situation. Now I know what I can do, what I can't do, what I, how, how I need to make sure I incorporate, um, what's it called, all of the, um, I know I'm not going to say right, the mobility and the stretching that you know you do before you start your, your training. I know what yoga I can do, what I can't do. I, I know, I trust myself, I view myself differently, I view my ability differently, and furthermore, I see myself doing it. I see myself doing more than I was shooting for before. In the past, I would shoot for, oh, I just want to lose some weight. You know what? No, I want my after picture to be inspiring somebody else. I want to show people, I came this far the year I turned 44. Guess what I'm doing the year I turned 45? It's going to blow my mind and blow everybody else's mind. I'm just going to be one of many. But that's because I see myself differently. I don't get up every day overwhelmed by doubt and insecurity and worrying about what other people think. I think more of myself because I know I can get there. And once you start to have that attitude, you walk differently. You know, I said this in my last video. Yeah, part of me is, is working on my, my posture because I need to. I need my alignment. I realize as I get older, you know, you, you get lower back problems and, and you sit so much at your desk. And so, you know, my glutes and my lower back really start to, when my massage lady's working on me, she's like, what the hell? And, but I'm, I'm focusing on that. There's just a difference when you, when you really start to believe in yourself and you know that you're not going to go, well, you know, I just, I, I hope I can lose weight, but I'm not quite sure. I mean, think about it. Would you, you need to pump yourself up. You need to start being your own trainer and, and you need to be that coach that's going to take you into the halftime room and get you so excited that you're invincible because attitude will change everything for you, okay? Think about it. Would you, would you go to the gym and hire a trainer? If you were talking to that trainer and you said, well, I, I want to know if you can help me. What I really want to do is I want to get um, 
you know, down to 15% body fat, and this, you know, I, I, you know, here's where the, I have the fat, and, and I want to get rid of that, and I, I really want to be able to get up on stage, and this is the kind of muscle conditioning I'm looking for. Can you help me do that? How would you feel about that trainer if they were like, well, let's give it a shot. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, I mean, we can, we can do something, but, um, oh, you know, if you want to get there by summer, I don't know about that. I mean, why don't we just say we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Would you hire that person? No. But would you hire someone that's like, hell yes, I can get you there, and we're going to start right now. Why don't you put that bag down, go put it in the, and, and I want you to get over here, and we're going to start working out right now, because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, by April 2nd, by your birthday, which, heavy, heavy hinting, that is my birthday, you are going to be in the best shape of your life. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You're going to be hiking mountains with your kids. I don't have kids. I'm using this as an example. Then does that make you feel better? Why? It's the difference of attitude and certainty, absolute certainty. Okay. That's something I heard from, there's two words that I kind of came out of that whole Tony Robbins experience with, certainty and blueprint. Two things that I haven't certainly had, <laughs> no pun intended, I have not had enough of in my life. I didn't have a blueprint. Um, for my life. We certainly didn't have enough of a blueprint that wasn't just floating around in our heads for our business. And now that we've developed that, everything is changing. Now that I'm developing a blueprint for my life and I'm adjusting it and I'm actually following it and taking action steps, my body, my personal life, everything, everything's changing. But you have to actually give yourself the credit and continually give yourself the credit to know that you can do it. I mean, I'm just saying, it's going to change everything for you. It's, it, it, it helps you get out of your bad moods. It's going to sustain you. Belief in yourself and, and whenever you feel down, you just have to go, you know what? I can. And you know what? I will. Instead of going, oh, I wish. No, you don't wish. You will. And once you change that and once you start to absolutely keep feeding yourself that, belief in yourself and that positive, you know, go get them kind of an attitude, I'm, everything's going to change for you. You've got to trust me on this, test it out, and I dare you to come back to me in a week and say, oh yeah, I tried to be positive with myself, that sucked. I don't think so.